Here's our deal of the week, a brand new 1969 Roadrunner with V8 four-speed manual transmission, heavy-duty suspension, hearth shifter, heavy-duty brakes, and full factory equipment, $2,549. Of course, back then, you had to pay extra for power steering, or power disc brakes, or bucket seats, or automatic transmission, or air conditioning. And a whole list of other things, so by the time you were done, the price tag was around $5,000. In today's inflation, that'd be around $40,000. So you see the price of cars really haven't gone up that much. And with a 383 V8, this thing got around 9 to 13 miles to the gallon. With a 440, around 7 to 10 miles per gallon. So technology's come a long way, but hey... $2,549 if I can only buy one today for that price. Not going to happen. Perhaps if you take this ad down to the Dodge dealer today, they'll honor the $50 off on all performance cars. $50 bucks off on a $90,000 Hellcat. Every little bit helps. Who knows? Maybe they're still in business. Probably selling Subarus. <laughs> We're at the warehouse and test facility. Let's see what we're rolling out this week. A 2021 Dodge Durango, a nice family vehicle. Starts around 30,000 bucks, has a nice six cylinder engine. Uh, but this one's just a wee bit more money. No, it's not a misprint, 95,730 bucks. That does include a tax and license plus the cost of gas. 12 miles for the gallon in the city. That's because it's not only an SRT, it's an SRT Hellcat Durango. And here's the emblem, so all your neighbors will know you forked up the big bucks. I was lucky enough to order three Hellcats in a row. Had one last week, got this one, got one next week, so you might want to subscribe so you don't miss anything. We have a Dodge Charger Hellcat widebody coming next week. In the meantime, we did a video on this Ram 1500 TRX Hellcat. A fantastic truck. We'll have a video for that at the end of this video. Just go to the end and click and watch. If you're looking for another SUV that's almost as quick as this Hellcat Dodge, almost, how about this Mercedes-Benz GLE 63 AMG? It'll cost you a bit more at 133 grand. We have a video for that at the end of this video as well. Under the hood, supercharged V8, 710 horsepower. It claims 0 to 60 time of 3.5 seconds, a quarter mile of, was it, 11.5? Of course, they cheat a bit and they do those tests, drain the gas tank, shave the tires. But if I could get uh, 0 to 16, 3.7, and a quarter mile just under 12, I think I'd be happy. To put all that power to the ground, we get all-wheel drive. If my memory's right, six piston brakes in the front and four in the rear. Look at the size of those babies. Inside the cabin, we have a nice gauge cluster. Pedal shifters on the steering wheel where they belong. The glove box isn't the largest I've ever seen, but more than adequate. Decent room. We do get three row seating for hauling the kitties around, and they do fold for storage, of course. There is a spare tire, but you have to crawl underneath to find it. And as we do in all my videos, let's take the headlights out in the dark and see what they do. I seem to be the only YouTube reviewer or any reviewer on the planet that does this, and that's why you should watch my videos instead of theirs. It's dark enough. Let's see what these headlights do. Look pretty bright. Here we have the low beams on a wall 100 feet away. Reasonably bright. Definitely good height. High beams. Not the brightest I've ever seen, but more than acceptable at this range. The dash lights up pretty good. So does the info screen. And the rearview camera looks a lot better in person than on my cheap camera here I'm looking at it with. 
Here we have the bright sunny building 300 feet away. Reasonably bright. Low beams. Wow, actually reached out. Am I on level ground? Yep, sure am. Reached all the way out. I would think for 90 grand, the headlights would swivel with the steering wheel, but apparently not. But then again, this vehicle has enough gadgets on it. The first half of our video show until it's over, second half, we're going to take this out and do some driving for an entire week. So let's get started. As we do in all our videos, we're going to take some mild speed humps around 20 miles per hour. See how the suspension performs on impact and I do have the suspension on the comfort mode. Well, actually it's called the street mode. Pretty smooth, although I can hear the tires thumping. Ooh, that last one was a doozy. Let's put this in the heavy duty track mode and see what happens. All right, here we go again. Bump number one. A little firmer. Number two. A lot firmer, but nothing serious. Still comfortable. Number three. Let's see what happens with this nasty one here. Oh yeah, I felt that one. There are three settings for the power steering, so I'm sure you'll find one that's suitable for you. Actually, if we go over all the settings, we have track, sport, automatic, snow, tow, and custom. Neat. That's happy hour. Let's see what some idiot did now. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Oh! Kabam! Yipes, that hurt. Oh, it's not a two car pileup, it's a three car pileup. We've got an orange car in there. Wow. Now, how does this happen? Three different directions. Three stooges. Wow. Up until now, I'm getting 9.6 mpg, very short city trips of one or two miles each. We'll reset this and do a short highway trip, around 75 miles per hour. See what happens. If you really care about fuel economy, a $95,000 Hellcat. But it never hurts to know, right? And we'll be driving in the eco or street modes for the best economy. After all, you're cruising at 75 miles per hour, you really need track or sport mode. I have to say, this Hellcat Durango is a very smooth highway cruiser. Going to be great for long trips. So let's pull over and see what the fuel economy figure is. Now, just about 80 miles, 14.3 mpg. Reasonable. If you've ever used a launch control on a European car, they're nightmares. You have to put the shifter in a certain spot and go to a certain mode on the info screen and hit other buttons. But the one on the Durango is pretty simple. Put your foot on the brake, press launch, put your foot on the gas and go. All there is to it. I'm reluctant to demonstrate this because I have a bunch of gear in the back that's going to fly around and make a bunch of noise, but this is the only chance I have to get on a private road, so let's do a run or two. I think I destroyed all my cargo in the back. Oh well. I think once is enough for now. And border checkpoint. I want to turn in the illegal aliens that got hidden in the back. Nobody around. Must be taking a siesta. If you like driving on backcountry roads, this is the vehicle for it, at least if you're driving an SUV. 
lots of power, great handling, and able to carry lots of cargo and people. Did I mention the passing power? Just don't hit a cow. This Drago rides a bit low to the ground, but it can be taken off-road if you're careful, as we're going to do right now. Just look out for those big rocks. I see dinner. They came to look at the Hellcat. Come on, buddy. Daddy's got a present for you. I'm in the mood for a steak. Yes, like I said, this can be taken off-road, but keep in mind there's a lot of overhang on the front, so... You gotta be careful. Well, I want to take a nice return trip on this curved road, enjoying the engine power and handling ability. And then we're going to wrap up this video. Yep. Nothing like 700 horsepower. Yeehaw. Anyway, quick stop and check the ranch house, make sure everything's okay. Things get kind of sticky down here at the Mexican border and now we're going to go back in town and wrap up this video for sure. I'm going to put one of these in front of my house, give the entrance some class. So what's my take on the Strangle Hellcat after a week of driving? My only complaint, well aside from the price tag, is the fact that it just didn't get any attention. I took it to a car show, nobody noticed it at all. Aside from the Hellcat emblems, it looks pretty much like a standard Durango. I think some of that problem has to do with the paint colors that are offered on this vehicle. For instance, if you get the uh, Charger and Challengers, you have all these nice lime green and bright orange colors. It's not available on Durango, just these dull gray metallics and burgundy metallics. Just not attention getting. In all fairness, you can get racing stripes. For 95 grand, I thought this would get that too, but not the case. But I don't think the racing stripes are going to make that much difference. But for some people, the low profile will be a bonus because they don't want attention. They want to keep a vehicle on the road that doesn't attract attention of the police when they're going a little bit over the speed limit. Of course, we don't do that, right? So if that's what you're looking for, something that's quick but doesn't draw attention, uh, I think the Durango will be your choice. Here's some videos of other Hellcats we've driven. Just click and watch. And subscribe. I'm going to need fuel money.